welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend, and welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for making us a part of your day. Right now, my Bible sits open to Romans chapter 3. Romans 3, if it's at all possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of God's Word and join me there. I'll begin to read at verse 21 momentarily. You may also want to get something on which you can jot a couple of notes. I really try most every day to give a clear outline of the passage before us, and that is going to be true today. The outline may help you review the passage later on, and also you'll have that pad and the means to jot down our contact information information. I want to give you a free sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. Now, a gospel tract is an evangelism tool. My announcer is going to provide the, that contact information at the end of the broadcast. I'm going to highlight one of those gospel tracts here in just a moment. So please have that pen and paper handy. I want to lead into our study this way. In my early years of pastoring, I used to listen to Dr. J. Vernon McGee on the radio almost every day. I learned a lot from him. In the latter years of his life, I got to hear him in person and meet and talk with him. Well, Dr. McGee was a very practical preacher. He used clear illustrations to really make Bible truth easy to understand. One of his famous illustrations was based upon Romans 3.23. I'm sure you know the verse. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Dr. McGee's illustration dealt with the impossibility of any person to jump from the Santa Monica Pier to the Catalina Island. That's a 25-mile span. Well, Dr. McGee openly stated that many people could outjump him, but no one could jump the 25-mile length. All would come short. Well, his illustration was simple, but it made this clear point. No matter who you are, no matter how religious you are, all of us fall short of God's standard for entering heaven. That standard, by the way, is set by God as absolute and utter perfection. But good news, God has designed a salvation plan for all who fall short of his perfection plan if you will come and receive and work with his salvation plan. Get your Bible. Join me, please, in the book of Romans chapter 3. Now, I mentioned the gospel tracts here a moment ago. And again, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This radio program is the radio arm of the larger ministry in which we publish gospel tracts in different languages and we give them away all over the world. This track is entitled, Where are the dead? Where are the dead? Recently, I was staying in a home where I was preaching in a church for a few days, and the people of this home, good, solid people, got into a discussion with me wanting to know about the status of believers after they died, and we got to open the Bible and talk about those kinds of things. Well, friend, lost people wonder about what happens to people when they die. Where are the dead? Can you answer? Answer that question? This track begins this way. Where people are after they die depends on how they died. You can die in the Lord or in your sins. It goes on to say that God sees sinners in their sins as they're being unfit for heaven. 
To die in your sins means you die without forgiveness, without cleansing, without hope. You die under the judgment and penalty of death. But the tract goes on to say that if you receive Christ as Savior, God no longer looks upon you in your sins. This is a great gospel tract. Where are the dead? It's just one of the tracts in that sample packet. Please, please let me send it to you. My announcer will give our contact information at the end, or you can order that sample packet at our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open to Romans 3, beginning at verse 21, here's what the Bible says. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there's no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, Romans 3.23 has to be one of the most familiar Bible verses in churches where the gospel of Jesus Christ is regularly preached and taught. Romans 3.23 is one of the most basic verses for any soul winner to memorize and understand. And Romans 3.23 is one of the best verses to use whether talking to children or adults because it's simple and easy to grasp. Every person has fallen short of God's standard of perfection. But the question is, why is this verse in this chapter at this point? Romans 3.23 is a great verse to preach as a standalone verse, but it doesn't stand alone. This week, we are going to show how this verse fits into the big picture here in Romans chapter 3. Let me remind you of where we have been in our study in the book of Romans. If you are a note taker, here is my broad outline for Romans chapters 1 through 3. My title for chapters 1 through 3 is this, My Guiltiness, God's Gospel. My Guiltiness, God's Gospel. And after giving his introduction and the purpose for writing the book here of Romans in chapter 1, verses 1 to 17, the Apostle Paul lays out four basic facts. Fact number one is that all Gentile people are guilty before God. That's chapter 1, verse 18 to verse 32. Fact number two. All moral people are guilty before God. That's chapter 2, verses 1 to 16. Third fact, all Jewish and religious people are guilty before God. That's chapter 2, verses 17, over into chapter 3 and verse 8. Finally, fact number 4, all people everywhere are guilty before God. That's chapter 3, verses 9 to 20. Now, though, beginning at verse 21... We find the answer for our guiltiness. We find God's plan for making guilty sinners into not guilty saints. We find God's plan for turning unrighteous and unfit transgressors into righteous and fit trophies of God's grace. My title for chapter 3, verses 21 to the end of the chapter is this, guiltiness answered. Guiltiness answered. Now, the basic point of all these verses is that salvation from our guiltiness is a free gift from God. It's a gift all people need because all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. As verses 21 to 31 unfold, we're going to see three basic ideas laid out. In verses 21 to 23, as they unfold the salvation plan of God, we're going to find out, number one, that this plan is a revelation plan. God's salvation is a revealed, a revelation plan. Number two, it's a righteous or right plan. And number three is a reasonable plan. God's salvation plan is reasonable. First of all, I read verses 21 to 23. This gives us point number one here, that the God's plan of salvation is a revelation plan. To deal with our guilty, God has revealed his plan. Look at verse 21. It says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest or revealed. Well, how? Verse 21 goes on to say, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets here speaks of the Old Testament scriptures. What Paul is saying is that God's salvation plan, God's 
plan on how to make sinners righteous in his sight is a plan revealed in the Old Testament. In the immediate verses here that precede verse 20, God says, By the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified or saved. All the law can do, verse 20 says, is to tell us what sin is, but it can't fix the sin problem. Now, I know you know this, what I'm going to say next already. I know you know it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Here it is. There never has been more than one way of salvation. Salvation's plan has always been the same no matter what era you were in. There was not a different salvation plan or method for Adam and Eve as compared to you. There was no different method of salvation for Noah as compared to you. There was no different plan of salvation for Abraham as compared to you, for Moses as compared to you, for King David as compared to you, for anybody as compared to you. Romans 4 is going to make this really clear when it tells us that Abraham believed God and his believing, his faith was counted or credited to him for righteousness. The Old Testament revealed this truth. So God's salvation plan is a revealed plan. It was revealed, verse 21 says, right in the Mosaic law and in the Old Testament prophets. If you're taking notes, jot down two words beginning with the letter S. The first one is scriptural. Secondly, suitable. Scriptural and suitable. Verse 21 says that God's revelation plan is thoroughly scriptural. It's based upon God's word. On Wednesday, Lord willing, we're going to see that God's plan is thoroughly suitable. It's suitable for all people. Well, why is it suitable for all people? Simply this, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What is God's glory? Friend, God's glory is his utter perfection, his holiness, his righteousness. Those ideas express the character of God. In him is no darkness, no sin, no shadow of sin at all, First John tells us. His glory is his holiness, his righteousness. God's plan to cleanse away all of your sins is found in his holy scriptures, his Bible. It'll work for anybody. It'll work for all people. Why? Because it is the need of all people, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I have had the privilege in recent years to visit the Santa Monica Pier, and it was full of people, and it's a nice place to go and visit. It's out there in California. It was a nice visit. I don't think I want to live near the Santa Monica Pier. It's just too busy for me. Thank you very much. But I remember standing on the pier. And I remember looking over, I could not see any Catalina Island. I couldn't see it from where I was standing. There was no way for me to jump from the Santa Monica Pier out to the Catalina Island if I couldn't even see it from where I was standing. Friend, it's impossible for you to span the sin gap that you have done with by your own personal sin between you and God. You can't span it by your goodness. You need a Savior. There's only one. His name is Jesus, and you must put your faith in him. That's always been God's plan. Believe in God's salvation plan. It's the person of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 308-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.